excited for an episode of Better Horses, but this one is really special. It is special. We're sitting in the Red River Valley, South Central Oklahoma, in a beautiful town of Thackerville. If you are a true horse lover, this place is like a little piece of heaven. And let's talk about the owner. We're talking about an NFL Hall of Famer, winner of four Super Bowl championships, two-time MVP Super Bowl, and we also have a sportscaster and a co-host of NFL Sports Sunday. He also has sang some country music songs, and he's an actor, and has a reality TV show. And with all that to talk about, we get to talk about horses. And we want to welcome Terry and Tammy Bradshaw to the show. Welcome How are to you? Better Horses. Right. Welcome on this beautiful hot day. Yes, it is yeah. hot. Yes. Well, first we got to thank you for all the viewers and behalf of us is letting us get a facility. And we're going to talk about your breeding program, your training program. And Terry, you got into horses, but this is a very large facility. Well, I, thanks, Ed. I don't know. It doesn't appear to be large enough at times. Uh, we have continued to add things on as we as our business has grown, but um, it's roughly 740 acres of land, and every piece of this place, with probably 80 acres or 90 acres, has horses on it. Well, we appreciate right it. Now. We're going to talk all about horses. That's what we're going to be with us. My name's Ed Adams, and I'm Susie Arbo, and welcome to a very special edition of Better Horses. Those of us who devote our lives to the animals we love can recall a kind of dawning, like a seed planted deep within us and it taken root and begun to grow. It's why our family built a company dedicated to supporting the animals we all care for and this lifestyle we share. Terry, thanks again for letting us come by and oh. ranch here. This is going to be beautiful. And what we're going to be seeing is your whole operation. And you have a breeding facility. We do. And a boarding facility. And talk about your training program. Can you walk us through on what we're going to be looking at today? Well, first of all, we start. I'm primarily, I'm a breeder. Mm -hmm. I, buy, I buy genetics to breed to the various stallions we have. And our job here is to cross genetics, breed and try to get, you know, superior individuals so that's what i like to do so it's all about females here it's all about the mare program so our breeding program simply is we breed we collect we select and then gerald jackson and um, kate jackson and tammy those three primarily they look at them and we lean on their advice heavily and they say yeah let's wait on this one it's this one and that one and then a lot of them are sold right off their mamas too for so our, our, it's more important Ed, that you own my horses than I show them. But that's what we do. We select, we train them, we show them, we sell them, we breed them, we collect brood mares from around the country, and we it's a repeating cycle. That's all we do. You know, everyone here is all about horses, and yes. how everybody got into horses. Walk us through your story. We know your background, but right. how did you get into the equine industry? <clears throat> well, I was introduced to it. I always, I always told people, you got kids, introduce them to a lot of things, and maybe something sure. hits them, you know, attracts them. So horses, I, my grandfather was a watermelon and tobacco, I mean, a cotton farmer in Hall Summit, Louisiana, 20 acres of both. And I was down there every weekend, and I rode Tony and Shorty, those are the two Clydesdales. There it is, farming horses and I just had a love and it was all it, and it was it's never left me so you grew up with them and you're also still showing today you do I do I'm stuff. not very good at it but I do <laughs> I I'd rather listen I'd rather not show I got a bad back right. and you got to stand out there sometimes a little too long for me yeah but I've, I've I've learned some tricks a few tricks of the trade but I enjoy showing because my wife shows and my son-in-law shows and my daughter shows and and it's fun. We have had, and my granddaughter, 
and we have had three of us in the ring at the same time in the same it's been a, it's been a lot of fun but i would prefer to let them battle it out but i do show i do enjoy it um but i i don't get to pick the <laughs> best ones well, they're all good but there are some i just don't get the best ones so when the granddaughter beats you and you have to sit there and take all that heat from them I, you know you just uh, you were, you know you just go along with it but just move it's well. fun it's a family thing we're so excited that you're still in the horse industry and you're the one who keeps your health up and that you have to stay healthy to be with horses oh yeah and you're still very active today i am in what way in well in showing in horses and well, actually yeah I, I am, like I said, I'd rather them show them, um, but my job, my passion really is, I love the competing, but my, my real passion is, is genetics. I love to love select the horse. That's what I enjoy. Um, I just love that. Works, doesn't work, you know, works, doesn't work. And, and I like passing my genetics home to people and we're all about that this ranch i don't know if you know much about us ed but we've really started thinking long term to the customer the the, the consumer out there and the affordability of a halter horse right all right not a not a rainer or cutter or pleasure we have pleasure horse too but halter horses and so we've down we've lowered our prices and we're going to stay there so people we think can afford to breed their mares to any stallion that we have. Once again, it's genetics and it's just fun to see people happy. And it's fun to hear people say, thank you for keeping your prices down where we can afford it. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel really good. Yeah. We appreciate everything you're doing. Stay with us. We're gonna deep dive into the Bradshaw Quarter Horse Ranch. We'll be right back. When we return, Susie Arbo speaks to Tammy Bradshaw at the Bradshaw Quarter Horse Ranch. When you're a barrel racer, there are so many things that can bother a horse. Just eliminating the back issues is a huge advantage. I feel like using a CSI saddle pad has given me an advantage over other girls because I know that my horse is feeling good, that saddle's not bothering him. If you're looking for a new saddle pad, invest in a CSI. It's worth the investment. No matter what discipline of riding you do, training, showing, and everyday stress is hard on your horse's legs. Decra Veterinary Products is a leading lameness company that brought you Osphos. Osphos is a Claudronate injection, an intramuscular bisphosphonate to help control the clinical signs of navicular syndrome in horses four years and older. Ask your veterinarian if Osphos is right for your horse. Decra Veterinary Products is a proud sponsor of the American. So I went to several different dealerships. I started at Heritage Tractor and I didn't want to buy a piece of equipment that can only do one job. I wanted versatility to be able to fit in a small space but also still do big jobs. And so I went with the two series John Deere. I got a 2038R and I can switch in seconds between any attachment and I haven't seen anyone else who offers that kind of speed and adaptability. There's not really a day that goes by that I don't start that tractor up. Well, Tammy, it is just such a pleasure to be here with you today on your beautiful ranch and meeting you and Terry. Um, can you tell everybody on um, that's watching Better Horses here kind of about your journey with horses? Like, how'd you get started? Um, okay, so at what little girl doesn't want a horse? You know, when I was a little girl, I loved horses. I wanted a horse. So when I was about 12, my parents bought me my first horse, which basically I would make him equivalent to a mutt that you would get from a dog pound. He was just a horse, but um, it was a Palomino and his name was Rebel and I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. So I had him for a while till I was 16. Then I decided I probably needed a car more than a horse. So I sold him to buy my car. Okay. So that's kind of where the horses ended for me. And then when I met Terry, of course he had all these beautiful horses. And then once we got married, 
that's really how I got into horses was getting married. And so he, sh he showed, he's always shown. And so he, you know, was like, do you want to show? And I was like, okay. But I was petrified. I was scared to death the first time, the first time I showed. I think it was a, a big Palomino and Mayer, and he had bought it like really fast while we were at the Palomino show and was like, okay, you want to show her tomorrow? And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. So I was petrified, but I went out there and did it and we won. And so then I just kept showing. You so probably. I was, yes. I was, it was so much fun. And probably for the first, this, I've been showing now for probably going on four years. And literally the first two and a half to three years, I was terrified every time I went out there. Just, I was shaking, I was sweating, I was petrified. Not afraid of the horse, but I just didn't want to get in a situation where things got out of control. That was just my fear of not being able to control the horse. Um, but now I'm pretty calm about it when I go in. And I, I mean, I've always loved it, but now I, I enjoy it so much more now that I can stay calm. And. Uh, have a little more faith in myself and the horses because I know anything I show okay. that Kate and Gerald have it completely broke and ready for me. Right. So I'm really lucky in that aspect that we have such great trainers for our horses. So that Absolutely. helps. Absolutely. Yes. And I've actually seen you show and you do a great job okay. and you show in all the halter classes. Yeah. Can you, uh, can you kind of tell our viewers like what showing halter is? Um, okay. So yeah, halter is, it's all about the way the horse looks is the biggest percentage of it, you know, confirmation. And then obviously your ability to get it set up and, and your your performance when you're showing, you know. It, it all comes into play. It all has to make a pretty picture, right. basically, is the way I think about it. So, you know, it takes a lot of practice. You gotta know your horse, you know, what it's gonna take to get them in the right position and how to get them to stay there, how to get their ears to come up. So each horse is different. One of the first horses I showed the most was really not a nice horse and so I really had to work at it when I was showing her but I, I'm glad that I had her first because it made it easier sure. now for me with the easier horses so it was a really good learning experience and I learned something new with every horse new horse I show and with every trainer I've shown with because I've started with Mike and Amanda McMillan I've shown with Ted Turner, I've shown with Jason Smith and they're all great and I learned something very useful from each one of them and now with Gerald Obviously, he's our favorite, but <laughs> we, um, I feel really fortunate to have them. That and awesome. babies, I love showing the weanlings. A lot of people don't like to show babies. So far, I've had luck, good luck showing babies. Um, so they're kind of my favorite to show, but I, I like to show any age, mares, geldings. I've shown a weanling stud and that was fine, but I'm, I'm really not ready to show the older studs yet. I don't have enough confidence in myself for that one yet. Okay. Okay. Well, you do a beautiful job. Thank you. So we want to thank you for being on the show today and to tell us about your journey and about what you do now with horses. Well, thanks. It's been fun. You're watching Better Horses, raising your horse experience. What do you get when you bring together one of the biggest names in veterinary medicine with one of the most caring and committed teams of horse health experts in the industry? You get a vaccine portfolio known for its quality and safety. A pharmaceutical line you can rely on to help manage pain and support performance. You get the products, programs and people of Merck Animal Health. It's time to go with United Mosquito and Fly Control's premier fly system for fly control in your barn. Providing relief for horses from the stress of fighting flies. And also makes the barn more pleasant for everyone in the barn. Easy, effective, and safe. With United Mosquito and Fly Control, we provide a full service. You as the barn owner don't have to do anything. We go everywhere and take care of everything with our friendly, fast service. Call today at 913-558-3814 or email paul at unitedmosquito.com. When you're a barrel racer, there are so many things that can bother a horse. Just eliminating the back issues is a huge advantage. 
I feel like using a CSI saddle pad has given me an advantage over other girls because I know that my horse is feeling good, that saddle's not bothering him. If you're looking for a new saddle pad, invest in a CSI. It's worth the investment. Carol Jackson, I'm in charge of the equine operation at Terry Bradshaw Quarter Horses. Uh, part of that's including the breeding program. I took over three years ago. The challenge three years ago was to bring our breeding program into the 21st century and our breeding techniques with a centrifuge, a nuclear counter, so we knew the viability of the semen when it was shipped out to our customers. But our job is, is to promote the outside breeder. Our own breeding facility challenges. Uh, making sure we have a correct number of mares that are in heat on collection days so we can properly have a good collection off those studs. Uh, with a heated, heated barn, a heated uh, collection room, weather's not a big challenge. Uh, the COVID didn't shut us down because we were a closed environment and we set the boxes outside, so we went on about our, about our everyday work every day. Once we get it to the post office or set it out for the FedEx or the UPS, it's out of our control. We can do FedEx overnight, try to get it there by 9 a.m., but there's no guarantees. Weather system in Memphis, Tennessee, or New York could affect any of our shipments, and we have no control over that. We do the best we can, and if they'll call us that day, we'll try to fly in the next day if we have semen left over. Because once again, our, our, our job here at the ranch is to promote the outside breeder and the customer. We have 12 studs, uh, one Western Pleasure stud, the rest are a halter. We try to, we have a double registered horse, two Palominas and several bays and a, a blue roan. We're very happy with our genetics program because we have a, I think that we have a genetic program that fits everybody's need. Uh, from any, we got uh, three horses that are completely five panel in in, then we can go anywhere you want to go from there. I think the, the word training is a misconception. We, we prepare our horses like they're athletes for an event. So we're, we're conditioning those athletes every day to be at a peak during their show period. And then the, the training, I guess you would say, is the desensitizing or getting them accustomed to setting up. And it's my job to make those horses place their feet anywhere I want them to, not just stood up. Because at any given time, I might need them to move the right hind, the left, the left hind, both front feet. So I have to desensitize them and get them accustomed to just standing there and hanging out. I spend most of my afternoons in the arena with the fans on, the fans off, lights on, lights off, tractors driving by, because I have to find their breaking point. I have to find what scares them, because if it scares them, that's okay, because when we go out in the show pen, it's a wild environment. There's no control. Once those horses cross the cone, they're on their own and they're live animals. But I have to find out if they're gonna calm back down once they get spooked. So I have to find what's their trigger and then I have to find out how quickly they calm down. The biggest mistakes uh, exhibitors make in the halter industry is, is presentation. Uh, they go out there and they think that if the horse is the biggest horse, it's the best horse, or if it's the prettiest horse. The confirmation industry is, is mainly a beauty contest and bodybuilding contest rolled up into one. And the presentation is as important. The horse has to be 100% and the exhibitor has to be 100%. If you don't dress to win and look like you're wanting to win, don't expect to win. If your horse is not properly prepared, if it's not clean, if the halter doesn't fit, any of those things give the, the judge a reason to look at your horse twice to find a problem. So you have to give it the best you possibly can from the horse and the person. Uh, I think the enthusiasm right now is because, number one, I think everybody's ready to go out and travel. Uh, Terry and Tammy have included a, a several nice incentives in the Palomino organization. They're big supporters of the AQHA. The, all the different number of futurities. But we're also making horses reasonably priced 
for the consumer. You know, back to the breeding, our stud fees are the cheapest in the industry. And if you want to come here and buy a horse off us here at this ranch, we're going to sell it to you right. First of all, we feed Purina feed. Uh, I've been with Purina since I was probably 12 years old. I did a, a nutritional study for them back then when I was in 4-H. And then we did some, uh, I did some study for them for the Outlast and uh, now the Outlast is one of the last ones I did. But our feeding program, we try to feed a bulk feed. It's a 14% dry matter mix through the bulk tanks that we feed our mares. Then we go into the late uh, last, last trimester of our folding season. We'll increase their nutritional value. We have protein tubs out in our pastures year round. Right now we're grazing grass. But we will uh, progressively go into the alfalfa into that last trimester. Our show horses are, are eating a combination of a 12% crimped oat that we have custom mixed and uh, Impact 14 Sweet and the Omeling 500 is our base program. The easiest way to get a hold of us here at the ranch is go through the website terrybradshawquarterhorses.com. All our breeding contracts, contact information are there. Both my wife and Kate's phone numbers are on the website. Both of us receive texts. If you're trying to reach me, I'd rather you text me because then I can go on about my way and I can check my text and reply to you at the end of the day. Hi, I'm Brad Pitt. Oh, if you have high definition, I'm Terry Bradshaw and you're watching Better Horses. <laughs> Couldn't help us. Closed captioning has been brought to you by Lina Weaver and Flattail Ranch. Those of us who devote our lives to the animals we love can recall a kind of dawning. time when something inside us awoke, like a seed planted deep within us and it taken root and begun to grow. And from that moment on, the path ahead was clear, that one seed set our course and determined who we would be, how we would live, forever connected to the land. We found purpose in these remarkable creatures that depend on us. At Stanley Premium Western Forage, we believe that purpose is what sets us apart and binds us all together. It's why our family built a company dedicated to supporting, enriching, nourishing the animals we all care for and this lifestyle we share. Stanley Premium Western Forage. Grown for the life we love. Okay. All right. I'm Kate Jackson with Terry Bradshaw Quarter Horses. I'm the breeding manager and marketing manager for Terry Bradshaw Quarter Horses. To get the word out, we definitely depend on social media, which is wonderful because we do have Terry Bradshaw Quarter Horses as a Facebook page and other social mediums such as you know our Instagram. But then additionally, we also kind of tag along with the official Terry Bradshaw, but highly, highly, highly use our different, the Equine Chronicle, our different mediums and magazines and such. So definitely in print, and I think that's really big for for our industry. When we have someone calling in for breeding during breeding season, it is, it's always fun, it's always a challenge, and they wanna know, you know, what, what stud best fits their mare, and that, that is a struggle, especially when they all have their own personality. Um, it's a struggle when you haven't seen the mare, and the mare power is so important. You know, we have all these wonderful stallions, but, you know, here at Terry Bradshaw Quarter Horses, we're lucky to have all the mare power we do, and the mare plays such an important part. 
So to know her genetics and her background and her pedigree, and then I want to know confirmationally what she looks like. I need to know if she's big and bold and square, or I need to know if she's big and up off the ground and tall and modern. So all of those things are very important and that helps us matching up, you know, her quote unquote flaws with our stallion's quote unquote flaws or best attributes. So we try to match those things up and make it all the best package it can be. I definitely try to look for weaknesses in both the stud and the mare. I try not to, to cross that, um, whether that be genetically through DNA panel testing or confirmationally. You know, if I have a big 16-2 hand mare that, and you don't want a big 16-2 hand baby, I would not breed to a big 16-2 hand stallion. Um, I think that's going to lead to some negativity down the road and some long-term effects. I think social media obviously gets the word out to the masses very quickly. However, our, the horse industry as a whole has now become very specialized to each discipline. You tend to go to those people that are the high profile or those names that you already know, but you also use social media and make sure that you're, you're getting the word out there, that you're letting everyone know. I'm Kate Jackson with Terry Bradshaw Quarter Horses and we appreciate you watching Better Horses. For more information, contact terrybradshaw.com. Hey, thank you for watching Better Horses. And if you've missed any of our shows, check us out at betterhorses.com where you can see all our episodes. You can also follow us on Facebook or listen to any of our podcasts right from your mobile device. And don't forget our newspaper coming out five times a year. You're going to love it.